Hello and welcome back to a midweek video. This time I'd like to just go over some of my favorite tips for thrifting. Some people avoid thrifting because it sounds like a lot of work to them, whereas I find it to be fun and relaxing. So I know that there's two different types of people out there in the world. What I'd like to offer is some suggestions on how to make the experience a little bit more organized and uh, my best tips just walking into a thrift store is quite overwhelming. I feel like if you have a plan, that's major. So let's just talk into tip number one. Have a plan or a list, as I just said. Make sure that when you're going in there, if you don't wanna feel overwhelmed, that you have an idea of what you need. So for instance, if I'm looking for jeans when I'm going thrifting, then I will head to the jeans first. That will be the first place I look. I always say prioritize what's on the top of your list as the first places to hit. A, because you don't want other people to go and maybe get something that you could have grabbed. B, because by the time you've hit all of the aisles, you could probably burn out, get a little worn out, kind of over it, and that's when you can just do a quick sweep of the last section. I will always hit the places I need clothing-wise first, which is always dresses. I always prioritize the dress section. So I always plan those sections first, and then I'll hit the glassware, homeware, books maybe even for some recipe books because I do like to get recipe books from thrift stores. It's a great place to get inspired for new dishes that you wanna try, gardening, all sorts of stuff. So I would just say go there first so that you don't burn out by the time you get to the section that you've been intending to look at. Another big thing for me is the feel of the fabric. If I have a lot of stuff that I'm looking for clothing wise and I know I have to hit almost every aisle to find what I need, feeling the fabric is so important on being able to go through the racks really quickly. Scan through the racks and just go by feel and quick scan the, the pattern or this color or design. But if my hand feels something that feels like a good cotton or it's a really nice linen feeling or it just you could feel the difference between a good fabric and a bad fabric. I should do a challenge where I blindfold myself and purely shop for thrift going off of the touch. The weight of the fabric, all of that is such an indicator to me of the value of the clothing. So you can, if you start to get really good with that, you can just shop by touch to quickly scan through those racks and then stop on something that your hand feels like, wait a minute, and then you can look at it and see if it's a brand you like, if it's a design you like, but it does help speed things up. I always say to check every size too, because a lot of times I've found some of my favorite, most treasured pieces in a size that wasn't mine. People pick things up and set them down in the wrong spot all the time, or they get mislabeled. So check all of them. Sometimes too, some brands, medium or small, are a lot bigger than they seem. So I usually shop the mediums to the XLs. So it just depends, like shop everything. I've already mentioned it in the other video, but I have really bad allergies and I've been sneezing my face off and I think I've like popped a blood vessel in my eye. So please excuse that. <laughs> I can't believe I'm sneezing that much. Like my nose is so itchy right now. It's like driving me crazy. It's also making me very tired. I also check every section, every size, but if I'm looking for jeans, I don't just look in the women's. I look in the men's as well. A lot of times the men's Levi's are the best. Like those are the ones that I tend to go for anyway. If you're going for a baggy jean look, a button fly, a classic Levi that's really worn in. Men's t-shirts too. Those always have the funnier things on them. Like you go to the women's t-shirts and it's like live, laugh, love. And like I drink wine because of this. And it's just always like really stupid stuff on shirts, <laughs> if you ask me. Maybe occasionally you'll find a, like a decent band tee. I love the men's t-shirts because they will say the most random crap on them sometimes, or they'll be like cool video games or movies. Like you can find better stuff in the men's section. If you like to wear shirts that are a little bit bigger on you and you want it to kind of fit like 
you know, a boyfriend t-shirt style, that's the best place to find them. But I do also shop for crispy white tees, like brand new with tags still on in the women's t-shirt section. So it just depends if I'm looking for something fitted or if I'm looking for something loose, it's just like to wear around the house, to garden in, whatever, you know. When you're going to Value Village, you have to bring like multiple items in a bag to donate to Value Village. But when you do that, they give you a 25 to 20% off coupon. So when you bring stuff to donate, you get some money off. It will also has those amazing deals with the colors off. There'll be a 90, 99 cent color usually and a $1.99 color and I will my eye in my head the whole time for some reason i don't know why i can't remember it either but i'll be like orange and blue orange and blue orange and blue and i'll be saying it in my head the whole time and then i'll look at a color and it's out of my head and i have to look at the stupid sign so i'll just usually take a picture of it so that way if i'm digging and i'm like what were the colors again i could just peek at the picture but i try to have it in my mind what is going to be on sale because that's what you you know want to start looking for first and really keep a keen eye out for because there might be something that was questionable to you kind of like it see the potential especially for me since i upcycle i could see a lot of things that have potential but don't really want to spend too much money on it but if it's a dollar 99 or 99 cents i'll grab it grab a cart grab a cart don't even no i don't want to hear it grab a cart <laughs> if you're anything like me you say to yourself that i don't need it but you will and then you'll have to go all the way to the front. And sometimes when you go all the way to the front, by then they're out of carts because we run out of carts here. I don't know about your Goodwills and your Value Villages and your other thrift stores, but the carts are usually slim to none. Grab a cart first and that way you have somewhere to put your purse. If you have a coffee, because I love thrifting with coffee, you got to put your coffee in there and then questionable pieces can go in there. Just if you're thinking about something, grab it, put it in the cart and then do the you know circle circle a couple times and then i go over to like a mirror or somewhere where i feel like i'm out of the way and i will hold the clothes up see if i like it do the clothing test if you could bring measuring tape that way you know your waist and all of that your hips i know that not all thrift stores are doing this some thrift stores are actually still opening up their dressing rooms but around here they have closed them all. So there's no way to try on the clothes and they've changed their return policies as well. They're really not that great. <laughs> I think what's going on with the thrift industry is a little sad. I feel like the customer is not prioritized. I think they really need to get it back in order after the pandemic and go back to respecting the customer. But I'm telling you what, you guys, if I was a millionaire, I would have a nonprofit thrift store that I would open up that would be just as big as the Goodwill and just as big as the Value Village, but I would do it in all the ways that I feel like they're missing the mark in the thrift stores that we have now. The pant size check and the shirt check. The pant check is when you take the pants and you go around your neck with the waist and let it touch. If it can't touch, it's not gonna fit your waist. You can at least sort of see if something's going to fit. Now, it doesn't really account for the fact that you might have bigger hips or, you know, a belly or whatever. So it might fit around your waist, but maybe it won't fit up over like your thighs or whatever. So it kind of works. It doesn't always work, but it is an indicator that if it doesn't touch, it's definitely not going to work. So if I have a pair of pants, I'm like, I might fit these. And then I go like this. And if it doesn't even come close to touching, then I know those pants won't fit me. So that's the trick with pants, skirts, any bottoms. Shirts, what I do with shirts, since we can't use the dressing rooms, is I will actually just like put my arm in it and like act like I'm about to go put it on. Because right there, half the time, you can tell if something's gonna be comfortable to wear. If I put my arm in it and I go like this to like pull it up over my head and it's tight and it feels tight, it goes back because I know it's not gonna fit me the right way. If I put my arm in it and it is a breeze and I feel like I can get it up over my head, then I know it'll at least fit me. And these are things that you have to do because the return policy is horrible. If you get over overly anxious in thrift stores, if the screeching of the, you know, racks. Wee, 
like people sifting through, but I do sometimes bring headphones because I feel like you can listen to a podcast or music and just kind of zone out. And it can be a little bit more enjoyable if you've got on music that you enjoy and you're just kind of shopping and in your happy place and have your coffee, you have your cart, you have all your stuff and you're just like having a good time. Um, you never need to talk to anybody while you're there. So it does not matter. Walk a mile in these Louboutins. Walk a mile in these Louboutins. <laughs> Basically, I would say put the shoes on and walk the store. I will actually put them on and then I will do like a runway walk. I don't care what anybody says or thinks. I am trying to see if these shoes are gonna hurt, if the heel feels stable. Sometimes the heels get a little wonky feeling, like the under part is like missing the heel part to a boot. Just give it a good runway strut around the store. So that way you can really feel the shoe, you know? Get that, get that, get that shoe a real good walk. Bring a tote bag that you can roll up and put in your purse, but use it to carry your stuff out. Value Village gives you bags, but most thrift stores outside of that don't. So the Goodwill doesn't. My local thrift stores that are just like Cancer Research Society ones, the church ones, the church-led ones, none of those ones usually have bags. Not every thrift store makes you do that, but I know the Goodwill doesn't provide bags for us here anymore. You have to bring your own or you're carrying everything out. You guys are expecting people to take all of that to their car. You're just teaching people to not shop a lot, like to not buy a lot of stuff at once because then they have to abandon their car in the middle of the store of stuff they've paid for. And then now take it out to their car and then come back and make trips because the carts don't wheel out to the parking lot. They have those huge poles on them I don't know if yours does that, but they have these huge pulls on them. I, I, I just feel like really disrespected if you can't tell I'm a little bitter about how we're treated at the Goodwill and the Value Village here. I just feel like we're treated like scum. And then you go to Sacramento and that place was amazing. Everybody was so friendly and helpful and there's dressing rooms and it's cute and cozy and it almost feels like they put effort into it, felt clean. I loved it. So since they've closed the dressing rooms, the ones that I have locally also have closed the bathrooms and I really like to drink coffee when I go <laughs> thrifting. So for me, it's best to really make sure that I pee before I go and don't drink any coffee until I get there. That way, the time that it takes me to shop and drink my coffee, I'm ready to go <laughs> because I can't tell you how many times I rolled up to go thrifting and within minutes of being there, I realized that I have to go to the bathroom and there's nothing nearby. There's like no public restrooms anywhere and I just leave. That's another thing that I think they're missing. Like just give your customers bathrooms. If Target can do it, you can do it. There's no difference. I just hate the way they treat people. So yeah, that's my little thrift advice vid. I hope that was helpful to anybody who just needed some tips on thrifting. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up and I will see you guys on this weekend's vlog. Bye.